Um, okay. But I saw that make the handle and everything. Yeah. Um, so that then when it's etched, we can actually um, put it together just like that. Yep. And uh, give an idea of what the, like, the knife looks like when it's done. So that actually all, uh, all comes apart. Okay, so what's the, what's the pattern you're looking to do? All right, so we, today we're going to do... Um, the carp? Uh, yeah, we're going to do a koi fish. A koi, yeah. With um, chai blossom. Okay. And, um, and water of some kind. I'm not quite sure. Something probably a bit, a bit like this, yeah. right? And so, Japanese way. Yeah, I'm not copying any of that. It yeah, just, you'll just, do it freehand. It, it, yeah, I'll do, the, I'll do everything freehand. It's just that I like to have that as a reference. Yeah. Um, koi fish, I've done so many now that... <laughs> you should know it. I should know. So it all comes apart. Simple. Three piece. I like the handle. I don't know what the timber is. Um, there were big, deep cracks everywhere that I filled up with um, epoxy and uh, bronze powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, that no, should be a nice looking knife. And, um, and I think it's already sold before it's even made. <laughs> uh, actually, I've actually sold all, all, all the knives I've made lately. Um, yeah, once the word gets out, you know, people... Yeah. Um, I saw, I saw this one last night, I'm waiting for the money to go through. Yeah. That's um, that's a triple edge, this one. I'm going to put this one up for sale. Wow. Uh, this one is a single edge, it was on, only edged once. Yeah, I like the way that um, I like the um, the way the etching goes quite deep and then it sort of raises. Yes, um, so th th that's what I call a positive edge. The design is um, raised from the rest of the blade. Yeah. Well, on this one, it's a combination of um, positive etchings and also negative, where all the like the teeth and all the bits like that actually. Um, etched in yep and this one is the last one that's that's probably my best etched blade um, so this one is a triple edge on the first layer you've got the skull the union jack and the stars uh, so that's the first part the second layer is the swords mm -hmm. and my maker's name and then the third layer is the the flag in the background yep. So today we're going to do a double edge. So it's <coughs> the the resist um, for the highest point that you want. The resist goes on first, and yeah, the the rest is left exposed. And that's right. Then the swords being the second yes. layer down. Layer down. That's the second. That's the second. Layer but of when resist. I when I do the second, yeah. I still have to go over the first one okay. with the resist. Just to make sure it hasn't worn out. It, because it, it does, thin. and yeah. and to get a, to get good definition, I've got to buff the blade between every uh, between every edge. Yep. So that actually removes the the resist, and I've got to do it again. Do you know what that reminds me of? It actually reminds me of a stingray skin. It does a bit. Um, You, 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 you'll see how I do it. I put mm. the blade in the um, ferric chloride horizontally with the design facing down and sometimes on top you've got a bit of a... you may have some um, impurities or things that uh, stick there. That's 
Very much like a Bowie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the, the pirate idea. Bowie. That was the <laughs> idea. But the original idea was to make a big cutlass like. Yeah. And I thought, no, it's gonna take me forever. So I thought I'll just make a a smaller version of it. I call this one the Long John Silver knife <laughs> from um, Treasure Island. Yeah. Um, no, that um, that really does. Yeah. Add I, to it. I, I've, I've had that sitting here for about three or four years. That's from Brisa, the, the, yeah. the guys in Finland. Uh, could not work out what to do with it. And then when I made that, I thought, oh, yeah, that's going to work pretty well together. I tried to make the sheet look like um, an old map. What do you call that in English? Um, compass. The, the compass? Um, yep. North, south, east, west? Yep. Yep. What's in here? That's a brushable um, waterproof. waterproofing bitumen paint. Oh, is that your resist? That's what I use as a resist. That's okay. the best stuff I've found. Brushable waterproofer. Contains liquid hydrocarbons in there. Um, okay. And mineral turps. Mineral turp. Uh, alcohol. alcohol. Pure alcohol. And. Hang on. A pencil, yeah. yeah. Brushes. A rot ring, that's just a technical pen, pen yeah. that I filled up with um, thinned on bitumen paint. Okay, bitumen paint, right. A needle. A small magnifying glass and a pair of gloves. Yep. So the needle is like a, a scribe. It's a very fine point. If you don't have one of these pens, you could you could also use an old-fashioned nib. Do you remember the old-fashioned um, yeah. um, writing nibs that you yep. dip in um, in ink? That would work about about as well. So the first thing you've got to keep in mind is that you can't touch the blade with your bare hands. Just uh, the, the, the oil of your finger would um, affect the, the etching process. Yep. You may end up having uh, fingerprints or spots that don't etch well. Now this blade is um, a stainless steel blade. Okay. It's uh, RWL34 steel. And the blade hasn't been heat treated yet. I find that uh, heat treating after, uh, sorry, uh, etching after the heat treatment is really hit and miss. It doesn't work well yeah. with stainless steel. With carbon steel, it's the other way around. So with carbon steel, you prefer heat treat first? You then heat treat you, first. Yeah, okay. it, you've got to heat treat first because when the blade has been heat treated, you still need to grind it off. Yeah. Uh, so with the carbon steel, you do the etching when the blade is done and sand it to its final polish. Right. So here the blade was um, polished to 1500. The first thing we're going to do is uh, clean it up. With the alcohol. With the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure I clean the blade dry it and then clean it again. Okay, so the blade is clean. So we're ready to um, draw the design on the blade using the pencil. And just take a few um, Reference drawings. Uh, the, the only problem with the pen is, is that it's quite hard to see what mm. you're drawing. Yeah. Uh, it may be a bit of a, a bit too dry. Maybe um, I think it's a H, HP. Yeah. Maybe something a little bit um, a little softer. A little bit softer would um, work better. Yeah, it's a very faint line. It's a very in, faint line. In the right light, you you've got see it quite you've well. got to have the light coming the right way, otherwise you don't see it at all. So 
I just I just draw the outlines. We'll worry about all the, the smaller details a bit a bit later. It doesn't matter if the pencil marks stay on the blade, um, it won't affect the edge. You don't need to remove them at all. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll come off. Okay, the outlines are done. What you can see here guys is you can just make out the outlines and what you're looking at is basically what we're seeing as well. It's a very faint line but it's uh, it's easy to see in the right sort of light condition at the right angle. If you've got too much light, like you see here, it disappears. I checked it all before we started. Now get, getting the paint to work is a bit tricky because it's not designed to take um, something as thick as a bitumen paint. Yeah. So you've got to thin it down, but just enough. So it's not pouring out, but so, it stays yes. inside until and, and, you need and, it. And then it's got to also stay on the blade when you're etching it. If it's too um, diluted, it sometimes runs. it comes off. Yeah. That's better. All right, so now we're going to use the high-tech <laughs> magnifying glass. And I'm going to go over all the outlines again. So we can see a bit better what's going mm. on now. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna add a couple of details like the, the mouth. Now you also have to remember that whatever you etch, you wanna leave enough room here because the knife yeah. is going to be sharpened yeah. and you don't want the, 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 the design to be too close. Yep. to the edge, otherwise um, it will be uh, damaged when you sharpen it. So it's, it's just like a painting, you got to take into account the frame. Yeah, mm. exactly. Now we've got all the outlines done, so now what I'm going to do is um, fill them up with uh, more resist. I've got some premixed with a bit of mineral turp. Mm -hmm. with a bit, a bit runnier than um, straight out of the can. So this is quite thick. Very thick. Look, because by the sounds of that, you're shaking and I can hear it's clunky. Yeah. Um, so this must be like uh, probably honey in thickness. Yeah, it's pretty much the same yeah. um, viscosity as yeah. honey. Yeah. You want to make sure that you cover all the, all the blade if it's not done properly. Um, the fake chloride with the uh, just go straight through. I'm gonna have to use the magnifier <laughs> again. If it's thick enough, you can get away with one coat. If 
it's a bit too thin, you need to, to wait until it dries and then you go over again. We'll have to wait until it dries. And because the blade is ready for the treatment, I've got the furnace on, so it's quite yeah. hot here. Yeah. Um, so it should only take a few minutes. Uh, if it's a bit sticky, it, uh, it doesn't work well. It's got to be touch dry, really. Okay. So you just place it on top. Yeah. 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 I'll show you. I've got I've got a magnet to hold the blade uh, yeah. parallel to the top of the furnace. A heat gun would work too. You can't rush that, you want to make sure that it's as precise as you can get it. Because once it's etched, there's no coming back, that's it. And um, I'll fix the, de the definition with the, with the pen. When, 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 it, when it's done, I can always uh, um, fix that. If it's really, really bad, Get a cotton tip with a bit of um, mineral turp, wipe it off, and um, then start again. Yeah. Right, it's not the easiest way to um, design. You can there are techniques to transfer designs. You can use um, carbon paper. Yeah. Um, But I personally prefer to do it by hand, it's a bit more time consuming, but at least you can say that it's your design. Yeah, and you've got, you got better control as well. Yes, because otherwise you can just print, print out the design, put your carbon paper, put it on top, yeah. uh, draw over, get all the outlines, um, but it's a bit... It's, you you it's, did the work, but it's not your, your art. That's right, at least... Here, even if I was to um, etch another one, there's no way I could um, duplicate it. Yeah. It's really hard to um, work out how to do it properly. Trial and error. Trial and error. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a guy in Spain, uh, Antonio Montigiano, who's pretty much a master in uh, etching, but he only speaks Spanish. So. I, made it a bit hard and mm. then these, these guys in Russia who are absolutely amazing but same thing they only speak Russian the, the floor is a little bit messy So you're actually dipping that into the resist and pulling it out to the edge? I'm using the, the wet resist, yes. Yeah, okay. Double check everything, make sure that there's no gap need to be filled that 
that's it. So now we're going to wait until that dries. And then we put um, all the details in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and again, just need to put that near a heat source. You can use a... Um, Hot air gun. A hair gun. A hair dryer. Hair dryer or like for us today we're gonna use the, the, the furnace that I will use later to um, heat treat the blade. Yep. It radiates quite um, quite a bit of heat. So I've got a magnet and we leave it. So roughly how long would that take? Uh, probably five minutes. So that's touch dry. It is yeah. touch dry, it doesn't, doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. That's only been well, maybe about 10 minutes. About 10 minutes, so yeah. now what, I, what I'm going to do is uh, add the details. So I'll get another piece of paper and put all the d details in, so the, uh, the mouth, the eyes. And so this is when you start? Would work with the so now yeah. I'm going to start working with, um, with the, the, the needle. That um, the clicking sound of the um, timer behind you. For me, for me at the moment, it's. It's almost relaxing because it's almost like a clock. It is almost like right? a clock, yeah. And it seems to be coming up at quite regular interval. So without looking, I, I know that the, the furnace is at uh, 1050 degrees. Mm. I, I like to um, turn the furnace on early so that all the inside is at the same temperature. So all, all, all the bricks, everything yeah. in there is at the same temperature. That yeah. way it doesn't matter that much if I put the blade edge up or edge down. I'm quite confident that the bricks are the same temperature yeah. as, as the rest of the furnace. And my friend Sandy in the UK, uh, Jackal and Ives, I think that's the same model that he's got. I am. Um, Paragon. I think so. Okay, I'll put the, I don't know what to call that, little moustache in before I start. There's a little antenna in the feelers. No, well, let's get scratching. Oh, the light is good. <laughs> it's important to apply enough pressure to, so um, to go through and yeah. make sure you can see the steel through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that.
Now the good thing is that once that's done and etching, we can have a break. Yeah, I could really do with a cup of coffee right now. You shouldn't have told me, I would have made you one straight away. Priorities. Ah, uh, coffee is a priority. A priority in life, but not a priority today. <laughs> How am I going to finish that? Like this. Yeah. The first step is done, the blade is now ready for its first um, bath. Mm -hmm. And what grid has this been polished to? Uh, 1500. 1500. I go to either 12 or 1500. That gives a much better definition and a smoother result. Alright, so we've got ferric chloride. Alright, so we've got a container with uh, ferric chloride. Yep. At the bottom of the container is a pipe with small holes connected to um, a fish tank. Pump? Mm -hmm to blow air on the blade that will help remove all the small residue on the blade and it will give us a much better edge and uh, right. faster job. I made up this little um, device on which I can clamp the blade facing down. Everything that goes in there has got to be made of plastic. Okay, yeah, because ferric. Yeah. Because it's very corrosive. And the edge faces down so the faces into the bubbles. That's right. Yeah. So that goes in. You got to tilt them on an angle. Should go. It's because the camera's on this one. I know. <laughs> it couldn't have gone any bigger since last time. Well, so that goes in. And the pump goes. I've never seen anybody use a pump before. This is the first time. It's on the French uh, knife forum that the guy suggested I should use a pump. Yeah. Before I use the pump, I use a feather. And every few minutes, I take the blade out and, and brush it with yeah. the feather. The problem yeah. is that when you've got very, very fine lines, they do come off. Yeah. So I found that that was the best, um, the best way to do it. You've got to keep the blade close to the surface. If you put the blade right at the bottom, the bubbles are too strong. Or are too too strong. They will actually make an imprint into the steel. Is that what the, the little got, tiny... Got, on, on, on one of my blades, you can, you can see that's the first one I made using that technique. Um, you can clearly see on this, on this blade and you put it in the light that you get all this So that's smart. what caused and them. I did right. I did actually like it. So actually yeah. I even went over with the bitumen paint to, to, to raise them a bit more, but they were they were already there and they caused by the, the bubbles because I had the blade at the bottom of the tank. Yeah, the faint one. Because I'm thinking, I actually like that. It um, adds a bit of character to it. It does. You know? That's why. That's why I didn't try to remove it. Yeah. I thought that was um, quite quite nice. So now this is soaking for about 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. I always make sure that I soak every layer for the same time to get the same same depth. depth yeah. Same depth. All right. 25 minutes. It is now five minutes to four. I will be back. Time outside. for a coffee. <laughs> we'll be right back after these short messages. We had the blade in um, fake chloride for 25 minutes. Right. It's now time to take it out. Give it a clean. Now, if you look here, what is interesting is that uh, it looks like. Uh, the blade hasn't been uh, etched. Yeah. And then it all comes off. And that's the other side. So I'll rinse it and then uh, I'll clean it up. Yep. Watch out, Potter. Thanks. Okay, so that's the blade straight 
out of the edge. Now I'm going to buff it mm -hmm. to make sure that the background is very very smooth. Oh, I love the way that the edging comes out um, gold. It does, yeah. Even like that, that looks really nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's a guy the other day who told me that um, I could actually um, use a gold leaf mm. yeah. to put in. And, and, and I've seen it done, it's a very good idea. So what uh, compound do you use on your buffing wheel? I uh, use some your hand buffing or buffing I, wheel. I use the buffing wheel with some grey grey uh, compound, which is the the, the, the cutting. That's the cutting yeah. one. Before before we do that, I use a bit of a mineral turp to remove the bitumen paint that gives us a better idea of uh, what's going on in there yes. yeah. okay uh, oh I'm, that comes out nice I will, I will add a few extra details yeah. on the next one because this is like uh, we were talking about before this is a multi-layer edge yes yeah. it's going to be a two-layer edge so that was the first one And for those of you who are inexperienced in a workshop, this is one of the most dangerous tools you can use. The buffing wheel. The buffing wheel, yeah, yeah. Hmm, we still um, got a few um, marks from the, from the pump here. Quite like it, actually. It's bubbles in the water. Bubbles in the water. Yeah. So now... Like you said, back to square one. Back to square one, we do it all over again. So all up that previous step was roughly, uh, because of filming and everything, was roughly about an hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But the, the actual etch was, what did you say, 20 minutes, 25 minutes? 25 minutes, yeah. 25 minutes and there's probably about half an hour of um, the clean, uh, adding the resist yeah. and, and you, the scribing you, and everything. <clears throat> you can almost keep the second, most of the second stage because it's pretty much the same as the first one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the blade's been um, buffed and cleaned. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is um, add a second layer to it. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to start thinking about the depth of your design and what areas you want raised and yep. which areas you want deeper and all that. So, same thing again. Pencil, pen, brush. And a few pictures for reference. I'm going to add water in the, in the background. The line should be easier to see now because it's on the um, etched metal. It is, yeah, it's much easier to see now. 
I haven't tried, but maybe I should actually dip the blade in the ferric chloride for 30 seconds. Just so to take the, 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 the shine off. Yeah. That may allow the pencil to bite a bit better. I'll try that next time. Same process again. I'm going to do the outlines and then fill up not only the the water but the fish and the cherry blossom as well. The outlines of the water done. Yep. And now I'm going to fill it up. So what happened? I just dropped um, some bitumen paint to the wrong spots. A big, big droplet just landed in the wrong spot. So uh, I have to clean it up, wipe it off, and then get a bit of mineral turp, dissolve it. So this is actually a good opportunity to show you guys what to do if you make a mistake. So tissue, or something. Tissue, a bit of a mineral tub, and a clean brush. And that's it. Problem solved. That's it. As if nothing happened. <laughs> One of the things I want to tell the viewers is when you go out to buy some paint brushes for this job. Buy some decent quality ones. Pay the extra few dollars because the cheap ones, the bristles have a tendency to come out. So pay for some good quality with genuine hair bristles, not synthetic fibers. Nearly done. The second stage is finished and it's been put on to the furnace to dry. nice and hot. It is. That's like a little oven right uh, there. Yeah it is. Okay so that's dry now. So that's dry now. So now we're going to add a few extra details. Um, 
on the fish and on water. the water. Dep depending on the light, you can still see the original uh, drawing underneath, which is going to help me yeah. add the details. Otherwise it's looking pretty good. I'm just filling up a few uh, bits that I missed. Okay, so we're about to do the second edge. Second and final edge. The bag goes back in the tank. And another 25 minutes. So to give you guys an idea, I arrived here at about uh, just after 2 and we got started roughly about 2.30 and it's now 5.30. So that gives you an idea of how long some of this process can take. So it's one of these things where you just got to put aside a day and just take your time and don't rush it. Just enjoy it and have fun. Okay, it's been 25 minutes now. 25 minutes. Second edge done. We're doing the same thing again. Rinse the blade, clean it up, buff it, and we're done. All right, let's clean it up and uh, see what it looks like. Yep. Let's have a look. Second and the final edge. So as you can see, there's a difference in color between the mm. between the two. So now I'm going to buff it, and then the blade is ready for heat treatment. Yep. And then it will go in the furnace, and then in the kitchen oven for tempering. For tempering, yeah, 220 degrees. Should give this a hardness of about 59. Alright, the blade's been buffed. So now we can see better. It's only um, once the blade is going to be uh, heat treated that I'll be able to uh, give it its final polish. Yep. Uh, and, 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 and then what it should uh, it should look a little bit more like this. Um, it should get pretty much the same uh, contrast between the different layers. Mm -hmm. And buff it a bit more so that we get a bit, bit more of a shine there. That gives you an idea of what the, li the knife is going to look like when it's, um, when it's finished. Yeah, and so you can see the difference between the um, uh, blade finish. See, that's just a, a two edge, so the edge is not very deep, and this one's three. So the depth of that is much deeper. Mm. That one's a lot more subtle. Which I think is okay for that blade shape as well yeah. because it um it uh it looks like it'd be a more sort of gentle sort of design whereas this is more It's a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. So going in one thousand and fifty for 
Eight minutes. Eight minutes. That's what they say. It's it, it's it's like it's like cooking. <laughs> you don't think you just stick to the recipe. Yeah. <laughs> 1050 degrees at eight minutes. Eight minutes. Mm. And then in the kitchen oven at 220 for two hours. Yeah. The problem with all these knives, I like them. I like them all. <laughs> that, that's one of the problems I've got because sometimes I don't want to sell them. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a bit like my little babies, like, oh, yeah. I really like this one. It's like the big Bowie that I made, uh, the steel flint Bowie. It's like I've had it for years now. Yeah. And the idea was to sell it for about four or five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just so happy with it and it's perfectly balanced yeah. and it's like, you know. No, no. Um, So what you're seeing here guys is Paul is setting up for for when the um, knife comes out of the heat treat. Yeah, so I'm going to um, quench the blade between plates yep. for a minute and then it's going to go in oil until it reaches um, room temperature. So this is when, um, normally when you quench it in oil, all of a sudden your workshop smells like a fish and chip shop. Uh, no, not with this one because that's a mineral oil. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got canola oil. Canola oil is a slow qu quench. Yeah. And this is this is a fast quench, but I don't really care because when the blade goes into the oil, it's already been quenched. Yeah. So it just to cool it down. Yeah. That still has to reach room temperature within two minutes. So I leave it between the plates for a minute. And then and then by the time I take it out of the, the foil yeah. and dip it in um, in oil that's about 30 seconds. So then I'm sure that <coughs> at the end of the two minutes the blade is um, at room temperature. Putting white on top of it so that it doesn't warp while it's cooling down. Mm -hmm. Another thirty seconds. The foil is cold, but the blade is still too hot to touch with their hands. And a quick dip in oil.
Ok, carré. The blade has been um, quenched. So all what it will get after that is um, a bit of buffing mm -hmm. to um, get rid of the discoloration, give it a nice shine. So to make sure that the quench worked, yeah. now I'll just run a, a file and it shouldn't bite at all. The, That's spot on. The blade is harder than the file yep. and it's almost straight. Uh, very very small window just after the quench when you can actually apply a bit of pressure done sweet not bad for a Friday. <laughs> yeah. um, so what we'll do is once it, the knife is completely finished, Paul's going to send me some photos and I'll put them up um, at the end of this video. So even though I'm going to have to wait well, a day or two tomorrow, tomorrow, you're going to see them in a matter of seconds. Good thing about video <laughs> editing. <laughs> um, so thanks for joining us. This is... Um, yeah, how to etch a blade and you know end up with something as nice as that multi-layer etch and the one that uh, Paul's just done for you today uh, is going to a customer that's already uh, paid for it. It's already bought. It's already bought. It's already bought before they even saw it. So uh, maybe you can send them the link to this video so they can actually see how their knife yeah. is made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so. will, uh, they will see it, of course. Cool. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And Thank we'll you. see you in the next video. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rob. It's been a pleasure being here. Always a pleasure. All right. See you, guys.